Regardless of whatever we had to go through, we have found and made our way here to the house of God one more time. Amen, amen, somebody. And, and you do know that we're only here because of God's love. We hadn't done anything uh, so careful. We haven't been so careful. We, we've not been all that good that, that we deserve to be. And all we're here because of God's grace and mercy. Because he continues to love us. So good to see you this morning. And we're thankful to God for your presence. And to you who are worshiping with us virtually, so glad to have you with us uh, on this morning uh, as well. Because of God's love, he wants us to be a loving people because uh, there's nothing that we can do relative to Christianity without love. Everything that we do has to involve love. And because God loves us, he wants us to love each other the same way that he uh, loves us. So point at all your neighbors around and say, I love you. And ain't nothing you can do about it. Amen. 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 Because God loves us and because we love each other, because we love God. Prayer is first and foremost in all of our lives because it is through the power of prayer that God continues to bless us day in and day out. And through prayer, we are able to uh, encourage uh, one another uh, through prayer. So uh, today is no different. As always, we go to God on behalf of those who have made their requests known, and we ask that you pray along with us as we pray on this morning. Uh, and uh, if you can, if you have your prayer journal or no notepad, uh, take down these various prayer requests uh, and in your own personal private prayer time. Uh, talk to God on behalf of these uh, who have made their Request, request no. Sister Mary Campbell is requesting prayer for her sister Mary Wright, uh, who is recovering from a uh, hamstring incident. So let's be in prayer for the sister uh, of Sister Mary Campbell, Sister Mary McWright. Continue to be in prayer for Sister Patricia Green, who had successful surgery on Wednesday. Uh, she is at home uh, and doing good and I uh, pray that the recovery uh, process continues to go well for her. Uh, Brother Ron Brown is at home. Amen, somebody. Yeah. Prayer of the righteous is very much. So we're thankful to hear that Brother Brown Lee is at home. He still has ways, ways to go. Uh, so continue to be in prayer for him. He just has to go through uh, dialysis several times a week and uh, still doing some other things. Uh, the family is also asking uh, that there be no visits from now because in the end he still has a ways to go. But we are thankful to God uh, that he has blessed him to be back home with his family. Amen. 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 So let's continue to lift up Brother Brownlee in our prayers as well as uh, the Brownlee family. Brother Carl Williams is going better uh, and is in good spirits and let's continue to pray for him. Uh, he has uh, some further doctor visits so let's continue to pray that all will continue to go well with his health. Uh, amen. Uh, continue to be in prayer. Uh, Brother Richard Clark, senior here on this morning, uh, uh, hearts, uh, condolences go out to him and, and his family uh, during the loss uh, of his brother uh, on this past Wednesday. Certainly, we want to lift uh, Brother Clark and the Clark family uh, up in our prayers, and, and um, sure we will have additional information uh, regarding the arrangements. Uh, as, as time goes. Uh, let's continue to be in prayer for Sister Ruby Christmas 
Ann and Dr. Davis family. Uh, her brother, uh, Brother Jesse Davis Jr., was funeralized uh, on yesterday. So let's continue to be in prayer for Sister Christmas uh, and the Davis family. And let's continue to be in prayer for the Smith family. During the loss of our brother, Anna uh, Smith, let's continue to be in prayer for Sister Meta, uh, the children, and uh, others who have lost one, uh, lost loved ones uh, recently and not so recently. Let's continue to lift them up in prayer. And then all of our Boulevard family, all of those who are sick, uh, shut in, all of our uh, two members, those who are. Uh, Still going through various illnesses. Let's continue to remember Sister Triplett, uh, Sister Sherry Kennedy, who is still going through rehab, Sister Cunningham, who is recovering from surgery, uh, and others who are sick and infirm. Let's continue to lift them up. Go with us just now as we go to the throne. To the great God of heaven, creator of heaven and earth, to you, O oh God, creator of man from the dust of earth, to you, O oh God, who has created all life within the earth. You, who is majesty, might, and marvelous. Thank you. You might have good things. And if you, if you don't do nothing else, you've done enough. Thank you for this great privilege that we have be called your children. And we thank you, Father, for uh, this great privilege that we have to stand before your majestic throne and call on your holy name in prayer. Because, oh God, we know the power of prayer. We know that prayer can change and fix things in all of our lives. And so we come to this on behalf of uh, those who have made their request known, we lift their petitions up before you. Father, we come on behalf of Sister Mary Campbell, who requests prayer, on behalf of her sister, Sister Mary Wright, who is recovering from a uh, hamstring incident. Please bless her, uh, bless her health, and be restored. And Bless her spirit as she goes through uh, this process of recovery. I want to continue to trust in you, knowing that you're able to see her through. So uh, we ask that you bless right there. Father, we ask that you be with Sister Patricia Green, who is uh, recovering from surgery. We thank you, first of all, for a successful surgery on her behalf, and we ask uh, that you will continue to bless her health, uh, that she will be restored to full measure that is your holy and divine will. Amen. Father, we thank you for answering prayer on behalf of Brother Ron Brownlee, who is now home. Uh, Father, we ask your continued blessings for his health, uh, that all will continue to go well with him, that his health will grow stronger as he still uh, has uh, some challenges before him, but oh God, we know you're able. Uh, you, you brought him this far, and we know you're able to continue to see him through. And so we just trust his care into your hands uh, because we know that you're able. Continue to be with Sister Nadine and the family as they uh, care for him and minister to his needs and bless us as extended church family. Do whatever we can to be there uh, for this family. But Father, we uh, ask your continued blessings for uh, 
many among our number who are going through grief and bereavement. Father, we ask now, especially for the Clark family, Brother Richard and uh, his family, and they uh, go through the loss of his brother. Uh, lift them up as only you can. Uh, give them strength and help them to hold on to your unchanging hand uh, in this season, because we know you're able to see them through. Father, Bless them with comfort and grace. Bless us as extended family to be a source uh, of encouragement for them at this time. We pray the same for the Christmas and the Davis family as Sister Christmas has lost her brother. Please continue to lift them up and give them strength uh, to keep on fighting the good fight of faith. Father, we Ask your continued blessings for the Smith family, Sister Amanda, uh, and her children. And uh, Father, just please uh, put your arms of comfort around me. Uh, Father, help them to know that fire it might be uh, winter now, spring will come again. But we trust, we trust you in the midst of these trying times. And all of those who have lost loved ones recently and not so recently, please continue to bless as only you can. The Father, for all of those who are dealing with various sicknesses among us, uh, we ask your continued blessings for Brother Carl Williams, who is doing better. And uh, we thank you for blessing him for his allowing his spirit to be good and we ask that you continue to bless his health, uh, that he might continue to grow stronger. And Father, for Sister Triplett, we ask your blessings for her, for Sister Sherry Kennedy, as she goes through the rehabilitation uh, process, Sister Connor Nails, as she recovers from surgery, uh, Brother Gil Oates, and so many among us who have uh, suffered recent illnesses, and those not so recent. We trust all of uh, that care into your hands because we know that you are a doctor uh, who has never lost a case. So we, we trust that care to you. And now, God, as we prepare this morning to worship you in spirit and in truth, assist us uh, in removing all of the distractions, all of those things that will hinder us uh, from giving us the worship that you desire, that is in spirit and in truth. May we be edified, may the devil be horrified, but most of all, may your mighty name be glorified. It is in the mighty name of the ruling, returning, redeemer, we pray. In Jesus' name, let us together say. Just like a 
Once again, we come before that throne. We come thank you for all the many wonderful blessings that you have bestowed upon us. Tell the Father, none more great than you send your Son, Jesus Christ, to come down and down the cruel tree of the cross, that through his death, each and every one of us may have a right to the tree of life. Tell the Father, we thank you for allowing us to be able to rise this morning, to see another day, and to be able to come out into that holy house of worship, and to study another portion of the holy and divine word. Tell the Father, we ask that you go with us throughout this service, and the Father, and that Everything that is said and done here will be pleasing unto thee. We pray, Heavenly Father, that the word that is put out today will be carried out to our everyday lives so that others may see our light as we let it shine. Heavenly Father, we ask that you watch over the men and women who are serving in the armed service throughout this world, Heavenly Father. Keep your loving arms and protection around them always so that they may do their job without any restrictions. Heavenly Father, we pray for those who are traveling the highways and byways also. Allow them to arrive to their destination safely. And Heavenly Father, we pray a special prayer for all of those many things you bless us with. The sun that shines, the wind that blows, the rain that falls, and the moon that glows in the night. Heavenly Father, although it's raining on the outside, we know that your sun will definitely be shining here on the inside. Heavenly Father, again we come asking that you be with each and every one of us 
blessing those that need the blessing, Heavenly Father, for the beat I will. These are our prayers, Lord, bless the Son, Jesus' name. Let us together say, Amen. Amen. I love to praise him. I love to praise his name. I love to praise him. I love to praise his name. You know that I love to praise his holy name. He's my rock. He's my rock.
uh, for preparing and leading a little song of volume, Brother Garland, uh, scripture reading by Brother Derek uh, Fleming, and then the prayer of prayer by Brother Maurice uh, Powers. I tell you, they've only uh, been in, even though they've been here almost a year, uh, they, they placed their membership a few weeks ago, and he, he jumped in and had us back. Amen. Just full force, serving and working. For, for the king and kingdom, and we're so glad uh, to have him as a part of this great Boulevard family. For a few minutes uh, this morning from uh, the text that was read into the hearing, Lord's willing, <clears throat> excuse me, we're trying to make our way back to First Peter next week. Uh, but this morning, uh, Mark chapter 8. Verses 34, beginning Mark chapter 8, <clears throat> beginning in verse 34. When he had called the people unto him with his disciples also, he said unto them, Whosoever will come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me for. Whosoever will save his life shall lose it. But whosoever shall lose his life for my sake and the gospels, the same shall save it. For what shall it profit me? If he shall gain the whole world and lose his own soul. For what? Shall a man give in exchange for his soul? Whosoever therefore shall be ashamed of me of my words in this adulterous and sinful generation of him, also shall the Son of Man be ashamed when he cometh in the glory of his Father with the Holy Angel. Look at it. <clears throat> Look at verse 34 and verse 36 again. When he called the people to him, he said, Whosoever will come after me, let him deny, he phrased in the text, deny himself. Take up his cross and follow me. Verse 36. For what shall it profit me if he shall gain the whole world and lose his soul? For a few minutes this morning, I want to talk to this thought. Is serving yourself worth losing your soul. Is is serving is making everything about you. Worth losing your soul. We live in a world where self centered is a common denominator among me. Society is in a downward spiral because everybody is out to please them. You can't drive on the streets without worrying about road rage because it's all about me. You in my way when you slowing me down. Put all of our business out on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter because I have a right to express myself and give my opinions and let everybody know what I am doing because I want to be seen and I want to be heard because it's all about me. Many politicians will 
run for office. Not because they are really that concerned about helping the people. But the real reason they run for office is because it's about me. And what Jesus will have us to know today is that if we are a born again believer, and if we are going to be committed to following Jesus, we are going to have to decide that to either make God a priority or make what I want a priority. And if you should decide that it's going to be all about you, I hear Jesus asking the question, is saving yourself worth losing your soul? A couple things he showed us. I want to I want to try to bring out in this text this morning a couple things he showed us, and, 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 and uh, we'll, we'll let you go because y'all probably won't be able to take much of this. <laughs> he shows us first of all, if if we determine that, that following Jesus uh, is necessary, he shows us first the prerequisite. Command. Verse 34 and 35. And then as we try to close, uh, he shows us the profit and loss considered. As we labor under this thought, is serving yourself worth losing your soul? As the chapter opens. Jesus in, is in the region of the Sea of Galilee. And there was following him a multitude of people because in chapter 3, uh, word had gotten out about the miracle that he had uh, performed on the man who uh, was deaf and had a speech impediment. Uh, the Bible says uh, that he, Jesus, charged them Typically, the man who he had healed, uh, not to tell anyone uh, of the miracle. But but you know when when you've been with Jesus, you can't keep it to yourself. Yeah, the more he told them not to tell it, the more they told. Them. Because when you've been with Jesus, you got to tell somebody. Now now. Now in chapter 8, uh, in verses uh, 1 through 9, after uh, he comes into this region of uh, Galilee, and now the multitude, because of the word getting out about the power of Jesus, multitudes are following him. And now in chapter 8, in verses 1 through 9, Jesus shows uh, his compassion because the Bible says that the multitude was hungry. The Bible says in verses 1 and 2, in those days the multitude being very great and having uh, nothing to eat, Jesus called his disciples unto him and said unto them, I have compassion on the multitude because they have uh, now been with me three days and have nothing to eat. And that's what I love about Jesus. Now, regardless of who is in the crowd, if you are following him, he will meet the need of the crowd. I, you can't, listen, if, if there are folks who are in need, just like Jesus, we got to try to meet the need and then try to get them to Jesus. Jesus saw the need. Then try to show them the need to follow him. Verses 10 through 21, he shows his concern. Because the Pharisees were looking for a sign instead of trusting in the Savior. The Bible says in Verses 11 and 12, and the Pharisees came forth and began to question with him, seeking 
of him a sign from heaven, tempting him. And he sighed deeply in his spirit and said, Why do this generation seek a sign or seek after a sign? Verily, uh, I say unto you, there shall no sign be given unto this generation. And part of the problem uh, with not only the world, but sometimes even church folk is that rather than trusting in God, we're looking for something. We're trying to see something physically when uh, all God wants us to do is have faith and trust in Him. Then in verse 22 through 26, he engages in the clearing uh, of sight of the man uh, who was uh, blind, another miracle. Uh, verse 22 says, and he cometh to Bethsaida, and they bring a blind man to him, and he saw him, and touched him, after that he put his hands again upon his eyes, and made him look up, and he was restored, and saw every man clearly. And then in verses 27 through 33, there is Peter's confession, of thou art the Christ, because he asked the question, who uh, do men say that I am? Uh, Peter made the confession that thou art the Christ, and then Jesus' crucifixion, uh, he would speak of, and then he began to teach them that the Son of Man must suffer many things. And then beginning in verse 34, through the remainder of the chapter, he talks about our consecration, the commitment that the child of God must make to follow Christ. And in it, he shows us first, if we are going to follow Christ, he shows us first the prerequisite command. He says, verse 34, when he had called the Bible, uh, brother, when he had called the people unto him, with his disciples also, he said unto them, Whosoever, not just the disciples, but everybody else at the time, he says, Whosoever will come after me. Let him deny this own himself. Now, now here's what he didn't say. He is not saying that we are to deny ourselves of the basic human need, the, the, the physical needs of the body, food, clothing. The, the emotional uh, and, and, and physical uh, and, and sensual needs that the body uh, needs in the confines of that. Amen, somebody. See, some folks try to fulfill the need that God didn't tell you to do. See, they have some stuff that he... You are not denying yourself in the right environment, in the right context. But unless you are in the right context and environment, he says you got to deny yourself. Okay. <laughs> but what he is saying is that the dictates of self Sinfulness and earthly security and comfort is what you have to deny yourself of. You have to disown if you won't follow Jesus and if you won't follow me. You got to disown yourself and deny yourself of some of the self centered things that we focus on in this world. Bible says in Titus chapter 2, 11 and 12, for the 
grace of God that bringing salvation hath appeared to all men, teaching us that denying ungodliness and rarely lust, we should live soberly, righteously, and godly in this present way. How do you do that? Deny yourself. Jesus says, if you're going to follow me, you got to be self under control. And the first way you do that is deny yourself, not of all the basic human needs. That ain't what he's saying. But if you're going to follow me, you got to disown yourself to the degree that the, the, the physical a uh, thing of this world, the self-centered desires that often control us and takes our focus off of following God. That's what you got to get rid of. If if you go follow, that's 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 the first prerequisite. But then, but then, but then, there's a second part of that verse. He says, and. You have to deny yourself and take up your cross and follow me. Not only do you have to deny yourself, but you also have to what, what, what's, what's the meaning, preacher? It is, a, it is a public demonstration of our submission and obedience to the will of God. And regardless of how painful, how difficult, how challenging it is, we have to bear it on Christ's behalf. Whatever your cause is, whatever your challenge is, the things that are difficult in this life to carry, uh, whatever that might be, you got to pick up that cross. Jesus says, deny yourself and take up that cross and follow me. Galatians 2 20. I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live, yet not I, but Christ liveth in me, and the life which I now live in the flesh. I live by the faith of the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. Jesus bore the cross for you and for me. Then he says in verse 35, 4, whosoever will save his life shall lose it. Whosoever shall lose his life for my sake and the gospel is the same shall save it. He does a play on words. Uh, he says to save your life, uh, you make your life a priority if you're trying to save your life. But when you decide to live, uh, self-centered life in this world by refusing uh, the requirements uh, or the prerequisites of Christ, you are destined for eternal faith or eternal ruin. But whoever will lose his life, deny himself by accepting the requirements and pledging loyalty to Christ will preserve his life forever. When you trust God enough to give up self for service, when you lose your life and give your life for Christ, you preserve your life forever. Because you, you do realize that you don't own nothing. Paul, Paul said, uh, 1 Corinthians 6, you are not your own. You are bought with a price. 
You don't own nothing but you. Whatever you have in your possession, God has only really allowed you to manage it while you here.
XYZ is Nisha Zombies. That's tough as quick daddy. Because if you struggle with whether or not brother XY, if you don't like brother XYZ singing, if that's your close, you gotta have, you gotta have it. I don't want to get wet. 
You mean to tell me that Jesus died for you and you ain't willing to get back to him? If you don't have a shame with me, I don't want to be ashamed of you. That's so what I what I came to encourage you with on this morning. Is that there is a prophet in denying yourself and following Jesus. Because when, when you follow Jesus, he will give you a rest that can never be destroyed. He will give you a purity that can never be defiled. A joy that can never be removed. When you follow Jesus, he will give you a life that can never be extinguished, a strength that can never be exhausted, and a beauty that can never be blemished. But there is a prerequisite, there is a man and a prophet and loss that must be considered. And when you weigh the options of whether serving yourself is worth losing your soul, you will soon discover that the follow Jesus is worth it, is worth it, is worth it to follow Jesus wherever he leaves it, I will go in life. Because serving myself, making it all about me, ain't worth losing. watch the Smithsonian Channel. And yesterday I was, I was watching it and, and, and there are these. Now I have no knowledge of these men's uh, religious affiliations. I have no idea uh, if, if they're, whether they're Christians or not. My suspicion is that they, they're probably not. But, but uh, it, it was talking about these, these millionaires or billionaires who now, now they have so much money. What, what they are exploring now is uh, now they got all this money. They, they don't have nothing else to do with their money. And so now what they are trying to do, they are exploring that they're having a spacecraft built to transport humans to the air of space. Running tools to the end of speech for the purpose of making money. That's being self centered. And after you make all of that money, when they leave you, Church, I don't care how much you're blessed with. I don't care how, how good life is. I don't care what you accomplish. I don't care how much you profit from a material standpoint, from, from the things in this world. Don't you ever get to the point to where everything becomes about you and you need God out of this. Don't ever get to the point to where you think you got that much going on. And you don't need God. Jesus says, unless you take yourself out of the way, you really can't follow me. And, 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 and sadly, for, for many of us, the commentary is, is that we, we really are not being and have not been successful in following Jesus because we still got me, my, I syndrome. 
It's all about what I want. What's going to benefit me? Is it convenient for me? He talks about it today. It's, it's been your struggle, it's been your challenge. You, you've allowed the desires of the flesh. And, and listen, those desires are not always sinful. I'm not saying that everything that we desire, flesh, is sinful. But if it's hindering you, From following Christ. Hebrew writer said, Hebrews uh, chapter, let us lay aside every weight. And he said, if it's something that's slowing you down, that's in your way, while you run this race, you need to get rid of it. Because it's hindering you from following Christ. In another step, it might not be simple. But it's something that you are not denying yourself of that's not allowing you to follow Christ with you. Here's the magic word. Church, if we're going to follow Christ, we have to be got to be intentional. got to be on purpose. So I'm talking to somebody. Talk to somebody this morning. Maybe that's, that's right where you are. That's your struggle. You, you've been allowing everything else to supersede your responsibility to Christ. Come on, ask for the prayer, otherwise, help you fix that. Fix that. You, you've not been willing to bear your cross. Yes, life is challenging. Things come up. Trials get hard. But you, you do understand that it was hard for Christ to be spit on. It ain't come out, you know, just spit on somebody. Mm -mm. <clears throat> somebody, if y'all know what I'm talking about, that's the kind of spit they did. Smack it. Blindfold it. And then snap, who hit you? If you be the son of God, you ought to be able to tell who hit you. When they put it on the floor, if you, why don't you take yourself down? And he did all of that. For you and for me. You mean to tell me if Christ was willing to do all of that on our behalf, you can't deny yourself? You can't carry your cross. Look at the prerequisites. And then count. Look at the problem of love. And then ask yourself the question this morning. If you've been allowing stuff and things, and yes, even sometimes people, to hinder you from following Christ, ask yourself this question this morning. Is serving yourself worth losing yes, Somebody's here, somebody's you this morning. You're not saying yes to Jesus. You've not obeyed the Lord of God. What Jesus did for me and for you, that agony, that pain he went through on Calvary, is because he wants you to be saved. He wants you to say yes to him. He wants you to deny yourself and follow him. You do that this morning by hearing the word, believing the same word, repenting, turning from your way to God's way, denying self, turning to God, confessing Christ to be the Son of God. Be buried in the water and raised by the Lord, the remission of your sins. Get up a brand new creature, brand new creation. Be faithful unto the Lord. God will be your friend. Won't fail. Then, when you start this journey, yes, it's going to be hard. You never said it's going to be easy. But when you deny yourself and bear your cross, 
He'll make a way for you. What'd he do? He'll move stuff out of your way. Turn those stumbling blocks into stepping stones. Come out and say yes. Come on. You're subject to the same temptation. We bid you to come. Pass me now, oh gentle Oh, they got it. They say yes. They say yes. Come on.
Is serving yourself worth losing your soul? Is serving yourself worth losing your soul? Prerequisites commanded. Proper laws considered. Those are two pieces that we can reflect on for sure. And Brother Jackson did an awesome job of making it very clear to us what was the message in Mark chapter 8. Jesus Christ. Thank you so much for that. We have some that are standing and we also have some uh, requests as well. This comes from Sister Xavier Reed. She says, thanks for your prayers. I finally passed my test. Hallelujah. <laughs> she says, took, took a year, but God in his faithful. God in Pray for her and, and, and Brianna and, and my family for traveling grace. Uh, she was in her first car wreck on yesterday, but everyone is fine. I'm so grateful. Just pray that they make it back safe. That's from Sister Reed. Also, we have some prayers on behalf of Sister Thorne. She's at home uh, sick today. And Brother Stephen Chalmers are requesting prayer on behalf of his friend, Jacob Brown, and family. And I just mentioned earlier that song that was changed. So please pray with me, please. Well, gracious Father, we are so thankful for you and your son, Jesus Christ. Father, we're thankful for the confidence that we have in eternal life through his sacrifice. Father, we thank you for this day, for willing us to stay, and we thank you for our messenger, Brother Jackson, as he rightly divides the word and encourages us to be more intentional about where uh, we will be in this space. Father, we are praying for, for Thanksgiving on behalf of Sister Reed for uh, her passing a test. We're thankful, Father, for for you and giving her the confidence to know that uh, she could be uh, pressed forward and be successful. Father, we're also thankful for uh, the safety mess that was afforded her daughter and her family as they involved in the accident on yesterday. Father, we thank you for, for them and we ask that you continue to give them safe travel as they travel to and from and those that are around them as well, Father. Father, we're praying for Sister Thorne. We're praying for her health, Father. We're praying that she will be well. And, and Father, we know that her wishes that she would be here with us. But Father, we ask that you look in on her and all her health care will be met. Father, we're praying on behalf of Brother Stephen Chalmers and his friend, uh, David Brown. We're praying for the family. Uh, Father, you know what the needs are and we ask that you look in on them and provide them their needs. Father, also there are those among us that are standing that are needing prayer. Father, you know what their hearts are and you know what their needs are. And we ask that you uh, grant them that, that they uh, pray for and they will be relieved and have confidence and go forward. Father, we thank you so much again for this day. We thank you for the opportunity and we Pray, Father, that the service that we render has been pleased and accepted in your sight. These are many other blessings that we ask in your darling son's name. Amen. Amen. Jesus, who rose with all power in his hand.
morning, brothers and sisters. We come to another part of our worship known to me, which is New Testament Christians we use to remember Jesus. As New Testament Christians, we are communion according to Matthew chapter 26, verses 26 to 29. And as they were eating, Jesus took bread and blessed it and broke it and gave it to the disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body. And he took the cup and gave it, thanks, and gave it to them, saying, Drink ye all of it, for this is my blood of the New Testament, which is shed for many for remission of sins. But I say unto you, I will not drink henceforth of this fruit of the vine until that day when I drink it with you and my father's king. Also, the Bible teaches us when we are to be in Acts chapter 20, verse 6 and 7. And we sail away from Philippi, and after the days of the living bread, and came unto them to Troy, and five days were we abode, seven days. And upon the first day of the week, the disciples came together to break bread, Paul preached unto them, ready to depart on the morrow, if Jesus speaking to midnight. Let's pray. Lord, thank you for living the city today, and we thank you for the blessing of Jesus and all that he's done for us. We thank you for this bread, in remembrance of Jesus' body, and we thank you for this cup, in remembrance of Jesus' blood. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. As we worship at the point of giving this morning, the rich young ruler, he had an issue with selfishness and self centeredness. He asked a question of Jesus, what must I do to inherit eternal life? He said, You know. Uh, that you have 
granted us to us to worship you at the point of giving uh, this morning. Father, we thank you for being such a mighty good God in all of our lives. Yeah. You, you blessed us beyond measure with blessings that we don't even deserve. Yeah. And because you love us, you keep on blessing us. Help us to give back to you in a manner that shows you how much we truly love you. And our prayer is, is that the receiving of these funds will be used with wisdom, prudence, and guidance as we seek to do kingdom business in this white Asian community, in this city, and over in the world is our prayer. And by the name of Jesus, we pray and give thanks always. Let us together say, Amen. Amen. By way of announcements, I'm going to have too many. Uh, we want to always make sure that we check the website as far as updates and announcements, what they did about the church or even if it's about COVID-19. Uh, we do have a card here that is addressed to Brother Richard Clark and his family. I'll make sure I get that to them as well. It says, with sympathy. Uh, to you and yours, a sympathy, a message just to say that many, many warm and heartfelt thoughts are there with you today. Love you always, Vance and Cecilia Backus. And I'm pretty sure most of us in here, uh, we, we agree with those sentiments as well. Um, we also want to take time to uh, acknowledge those who have a birthday or an anniversary this week. So if you have one of those, feel free to raise your hand. If you're in the crowd, say something in the, in the chat. We'll give them a hand anyway. And that's the thing about many And church, say, man, we trust that you've been encouraged as a result of your being here uh, on this morning and that the Word of God has truly, truly uh, blessed your life. Uh, so glad to have those who might be our guests and friends uh, on this morning. You are our honored guest. And it's been our great delight to have you worshiping with us. Uh, if you're worshiping virtually, and particularly if you're worshiping with us here in person, we're certainly glad to have you here on the boulevard. But after all, the boulevard is a place of belonging. And it leads to a place of blessing. Amen, somebody. If you're here worshiping in person, uh, we want to give you an opportunity to stand. If you so desire, let us know who you are and where you're from. Uh, out of those to my right, you visit. you like to let us know who you are? Yes.
glad to me and for that. And then uh, let me just uh, encourage the congregation to be listening for additional information regarding this. Uh, you know that White Haven of Mary right down the street is our one of our adopted schools. And uh, for the last uh, several years, we've been doing things relative to, to uh, school supplies. Last year, we did uh, backpacks uh, with school supplies and uh, uniform tops. Uh, had the opportunity to talk with Principal Elliott a couple of weeks ago. They, they will not need any school supplies or uniform tops this year because of COVID in 2020, they still have uh, quite a bit of supplies left. So unfortunately, parents didn't really come through to pick up the things uh, for their children. So what he is asking us, he, they do need our help uh, with uh, furnishing their, you remember, I guess a couple years, uh, a couple years or so ago, we uh, donated toys to their uh, ACE store. And what this is, is a program that they have to encourage, and what they're going to use it for this year is to encourage attendance uh, among uh, the students. Uh, the kids can accumulate what they call ACE books. And they, once they accumulate so many, they go into this store that they have designed and purchase toys. And so we contributed to that a couple of years ago. And so he's asking for us uh, and we will do that again this year. And uh, we just think that, uh, you know, whatever we can do to support, you know, our doctor school, uh, to help them support and take care of our children, that's what we want to do. And so, uh, probably next Sunday we'll have more information uh, regarding this, uh, regarding when they're going to need it, uh, and kind of some ideas of what kind of toys. But just be thinking about that and uh, be prepared to uh, start to go out and purchase whatever you can. If you'd like to donate, if you'd like to participate, um, if you can't, that's fine. But whatever you can do, they will appreciate uh, us being able to help them help their children. Amen? Amen. Amen. Uh, in the midst of this pandemic, don't panic, but in the midst of prayer, find power and peace. You still got to be careful with it. So get your vaccine, wear your mask, let's be careful not only for ourselves, but for our family and our spiritual family. Amen. If I can leave it, God come to you. So help me to show you. Give God some praise and we can pass the soul. Give thanks to the Lord, for He is good, for He is good. Give thanks to the Lord, for He is good, for He is good. Give thanks to the Lord, for He is good, for He is good. His love endures forever. Everybody give thanks to the Lord, for He is good, for He is good. Shedding in the Father. And we pray for each individual that are here and those that are not. 
Dear Father, we pray that the Bruce be with the Clark family, dear Father, be with Sister Christmas, the Avis family, dear Father, especially be with the Smith family, dear Father. And dear Father, be with us. They will be there in time of their need, dear Father. Father, we ask you to give us grace as we leave him, that we reach our destination safely. Father, visit us as we travel back, dear Father. We pray on their behalf also. And dear Father, go with us now and keep us. Ask for the forgiveness of sin. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Wait on your instructions. Good morning. So, uh,